What's up, everybody? It is Wednesday night, and you know th what that means. It is Wine Down Wednesday. I'm your host, Amelia Fortes, and we are here having self-love conversations every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. And today, our topic is going to be how to start a podcast or YouTube channel. And as always, I'm going to start off with a little bit of a self-love astrology weather report. And I have a very special guest tonight. Um, we're going to talk about how to start a podcast or YouTube channel. Again, if this is your first time here, welcome to Wind Down Wednesday. I'm so happy to have you here. We are like 20, 21 weeks strong now. We've been going strong through quarantine, and he, and we're here again. So welcome. Thank you for joining us for the first time. If this is your 17 millionth time here, welcome back. Thank you so much for being a fan of the show. As always, as you hop on, please let us know in the comments so we can say hello. And if you are catching this on the replay, give us a hashtag replay. So again, tonight we are going to be talking about how to start a podcast. Have you ever wanted to create content that mattered, that impacted people, that you were passionate about, but you, you're still stuck in the planning phases and maybe you've been wanting to do one forever? Well, this is the episode for you. And like I said, we're going to start off a little bit with a self-love astrology weather report. You know how much I'm into astrology. So we're going to talk about a little bit of the fuckery that's been going on in the cosmos and to join me on this amazing amazing episode you already know him you've seen him on the show before we've got one of my best friends in the entire world we've got reese johnston in the house what, what up what up is reese's peace where positive energy activates constant elevation what's happening amelia what's going on oh i love you so much you look amazing tonight how are you feeling tonight what are you drinking it's wine down wednesday what are you drinking you know, I'm I, I, I consistent. Last time I was on the show, I was sipping on some uh, Bacardi Dragonberry, so I got a little cup. Uh, oh, you know. Ooh, a little red cup, too. You know, you okay. a red. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm drinking a little Pinot Gris tonight in my usual red goblet that I remember you said looks violet. Yes. Um, but yeah, let us know what y'all are drinking in the comments, if you've got some wine, if you've got something a little bit stronger, because it's just been that week. Um, but hey, Jeremy. Hey, Troy. I see a lot of people on. As you're on, just please say hello in the comments. And again, if you're catching the replay, give us a hashtag replay. So yes, Jeremy agrees. A lot of fuckery this week, girl. What the okay. heck? So as always, let's first start with a little self-love astrology weather report, shall we? Um, so Reese, I know you and I were kind of talking about this, but actually you've, you've been pretty peaceful the last couple of weeks. Tell us a little bit about that. Man, um, I, well, I, I can say this, just really focusing on self um, and, and not really allowing out outside circumstances that I can't control to, to really do, uh, to really enter into my inner peace, mm. um, be these past couple of weeks. And I mean, you know, we, we can, we can get into it in a little bit, but these past couple of weeks leading up into this week specifically, usually typically in the past has always been more of like an emotional roller coaster. Um, because I have a very significant, um, uh, um or there, there's a lot of significance to this week in particular. Um, that, you know, I, I can get into in a little bit, but, um, this year I've just been really focusing on, again, self-love, personal development, new beginnings. And, um, and like, I've never felt better for real, for real. I love it. Well, you know, honestly, Reese, what you're talking about is how to handle basically the astrology fuckery that's happening this week. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing that I heard you say was, I've just been focusing on self. And I know for you, self also means spirit. You have a really strong connection with God and spirit and source. And Absolutely. so, and, and what you said, not letting things that I can't control affect me. And that is essentially, you know, spoiler alert, that is the antidote to the, the Cosmo fuckery that's going on. So let's just kind of talk about like, so if you've been feeling very angsty if you've been feeling like what the hell are people on if you've been acting out of character if people close to you have been acting out of character if there's been a lot of like anger like 
like just like what the hell is, has been happening the last couple weeks you yeah. are not alone it is all written in the stars um if you're watching this you know i talk a lot about astrology if you're somewhat still skeptical i mean energy is energy and the planets around us affect us just like the people around us affect us that's how i look at astrology um and i know that there's a lot of like writing and stuff out there that make it seem hokey but it's really not i mean there's science behind it there's numbers behind it so essentially um i'll just give you the broad strokes of what's happening and i actually posted about it on my Instagram. So if you go to my Instagram at the Amelia Fortes, I'm basically gonna be reading from my Instagram post. Um, it's gonna be the post where it's the hands making a heart that say self love. But essentially the broad strokes of what's going on right now is number one, Uranus went retrograde on August 15th. So that's the, you know, the last couple of weeks. And essentially the, the main broad stroke of what that means is it's calling us to become more of our authentic selves, to be more in integrity with who we are and what we're about and what we want to create in this world and being authentically who we are. And here's the thing, most of us are out of integrity. Most of us are being inauthentic and that's not a judgment, that's just a fact. Um, I think a lot of us, you know, as human beings, we really like wanna fit in with our family, with our culture, with people that we like, with our jobs. And so there's a lot of things that happen to us throughout the course of our lives that have us conditioned to not be authentic with ourselves. So even though Uranus going retrograde saying, oh, more authentically who I am, that sounds great. Yes, it is great, but at the same time, it will challenge you, especially in places where you are being inauthentic, where you are being out of integrity. So if you've been feeling challenged with your money, with your bank account, that's a sign that you are being out of integrity with managing your money and your finances. If you're feeling really challenged in your romantic relationship, there's like, you know, you're probably not sharing all of who you are or being authentically you or there's something that needs to change or at work, whatever area in your life, Uranus retrograde is pushing you to be more authentically you. So if you are already on this journey of being more authentically you, it's just gonna further catalyze you there. But if you're like really out of integrity right now, you'll, you'll likely be extremely challenged during this time. Um, the other thing that's going on is Mars squaring Saturn. Now Mars and Saturn, in my opinion, are like two of the most challenging planets. You know, Saturn is all about rules and restriction and, and just like structure. And I say it's challenging because there's a lot of ways that I don't like structure and Mars, you know, the God of war, the masculine. And so them squaring each other, it's basically like, you know, what is it? Big dick swinging contest when they square each other. Um, so that that's where you'll really be tested and challenged seemingly by things where you're like blindsided by like weird out of character actions of others or you might be acting weird and out of character. Essentially, this, this influence will really test our patience. Um, and then recently, you know, Venus, Jupiter, and Pluto basically joined the Mars square Saturn, like I said, fuck fest. Um, and, and it's just, you know, Pluto is about shadow. It's about secrets. It's about the dark side. You know, it's, it's like the planet that's very far away. So it's just like, all the things lurking beneath the surface. Venus is a lot about the feminine and interpersonal relationships. And Jupiter is the planet of expansion. So they're all basically in like this T-square and they're just like, I don't know, it's, it's a party either you wanna be at or you don't wanna be at, but we're all here, we're in this party. Um, and so these are, these are the themes that are that we're being called to be challenged. And so Reese, I think you feeling at, like I personally have not felt very, very peaceful um, during this time, but you feeling at peace during this time because saying like you're not letting outside things you can't control affect you, you know, it doesn't mean that, sh you know, shit hasn't been going down, but it sounds like you're like, <laughs> you kind of just be the observer of the shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. um, yeah, do you want to speak more about that? Because I know this week, like you said, this week is usually pretty emotionally tumultuous for you. So how, yeah, how have you gotten over yeah. that? 
So if if I could tell you why this why this week is so for sure. So um so August has always been not always but in the past decade, August has been um a bittersweet month. Uh, bittersweet because you know there there's a lot of birthday celebrations, but um, where where the bitter comes in is that I have an older brother um, who actually took his life back in 2011, and just this past Monday, August 24th, that was his his birthday, um, or his you know, well yeah his his birthday I, I call his death day his uh his remembrance day, but um, his but angel yeah. birthday. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And um, of, of course, the world as a whole, you know, uh, we we were all affected by Kobe Bryant's death. Um, so his birthday was just this past Sunday. So, you know, bet- between those two days, there was just a heavy resonance um, in in the world and also in my world. Um, but like I said, there, it's, it's a month of celebration because my mother's birthday is coming up this weekend. Uh, by the way, she shared she shares the same birthday as Michael Jackson, so that's kind of cool too. Um, but yeah, so so o- over the past few years, um, this time of year has always been just kind of emotionally like a roller coaster, um, kind of draining, but also like a release. Um, but you know, I've 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 brought new meaning to to this time of year where now I see it as new beginnings, and so. Uh, you know, we yeah. can we can get into that in a little bit. Yeah, too. we'll get into that for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I and you know, I it's something that I think people can relate to because it's something that I've learned recently. So it's interesting. August is that month for you. For me, that is September mm. because in September I have my nephew's birthday. Well, both of my nephews' birthdays. Um, or two of my nephews, I have more than two nephews, two of my nephews' birthdays, my brother, my sister, my mom's birthday. So with my mom's birthday, that's where it gets bittersweet because as some of you know, my mother passed away seven years ago. Um, But then also it's my nephew's angel birthday as well as his natal birthday. So Mm -hmm. my nephew passed away five years ago in September, two days before his 25th birthday. And so his actual birthday and his angel birthday are all in September. And um, I remember I I learned about this because when I was going to therapy, especially after my mother passed away, which was in April because she passed away first, um, I noticed that April was always hard for me. And, um, you know, she was teaching me about how the body keeps the score. And a lot of you that are a fan of the show and watch a lot of my content, I'm always talking about how emotions take up real estate in your body and so our body senses everything even if our conscious mind doesn't our subconscious mind is always taking in billions and billions of message units every day all day long and so my body remembers you know when that time of year starts to shift towards spring it remembers the trauma that i felt when i heard about my mom passing away and when I heard about my mom being in critical condition. And it's the same around September when, cause there was very, very emotionally stressful when my nephew was dying. And so around this time of year, my body starts to remember and kind of feel that. And I think it's important to be aware of that for any of you watching, if you relate, I make it a point to be extra, extra gentle with myself in April and in September, pretty much cause I know I just know that it's it's there's a lot of emotional processing that needs to be done. And I have been able to, to become more and more peaceful over the years because of that preparation and that um, self-love and self-care that I make a priority. So yeah, it's so interesting that, um, that April is that month uh, for you because April is also another bittersweet uh, uh, month for me. I as know well. we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's my actual birthday. I also have a younger brother who's who shares birthday the day after mine. Um, but you know, eleven days after I turned eighteen is when my brother took his life. So that's his angel day. Um, yeah. So you know that the, these these two times a year, like we're 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 very synonymous in just this part of the year. You know. Well, we already know we're soulmates. For sure. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. you and I just, um, yeah. So 
for those of you that don't know, I've talked, we've talked about our relationship on several episodes of this show, but Reese is literally like, we were brothers in a past life. We are soul family. Like when we met, there was like instant connection, just instant camaraderie, instant recognition. Yo, y'all wouldn't believe the story. I know, but just in a real way, our friendship just continues to evolve and grow. And it's just the, the comfort that, that we have with each other, it's definitely like past lifetimes. Like this isn't like just this lifetime. And so it's it's not surprising to me at all that we have parallel, you know, around April and then around this time of year. Um, you know, we, we, we can we can hold each other in that, you know, and and essentially, you know, just to wrap up the self-love astrology report, that that's what's going on. The the antidote, the medicine for you to get through this rather tumultuous time, which will continue, you know, just to not sugarcoat it, um, especially with COVID and, and this we're still in a pandemic, we're still in quarantine. So it will continue, you will continue to be challenged. But just know that it's the universe pushing you towards being more of your authentic self. So welcome those challenges and challenge yourself. You know, sometimes I'm like, I like to challenge myself before the universe does so that I can just be ahead. Um, and so I'm always challenging myself every day. How can I be more of who I really am? How can I be authentic? How can I show up in integrity? You know, and I'm human, and I'm not perfect, but, but I, I, I strive for like, as perfect integrity as I can. Um, and so the medicine is really self-love, self-care, compassion, forgiveness, patience. You might be tempted to get really pissed off at close people in your life, but just try your best to like let ride that anger wave and then get back to the heart of how much you love someone um, because you don't wanna burn bridges or cut people off just because of like this tumultuous time, um, which is something that you know, I've been going through with several relationships in my life. And now that I've kind of gotten over the hump, I've I've reached back out to like, just kind of rekindle those like disagreements that might've happened. Um, because when I got to the heart of the matter, like these are people that I really love and that matter to me. And we all make mistakes and we all, we're all gonna disappoint someone and we're all gonna be disappointed. We're all gonna hurt somebody and we're all gonna be hurt and the important for me the most important thing is to connect to like how much you love someone how much you love yourself like anything that i'm saying about interpersonal that's also like with self um and so the more you're patient with others the more you can be patient with yourself um so you're not alone you can get through it and um yeah let's get into like the the meaty meaty part of today's episode mm. now so today we are talking about how to start a podcast or a YouTube channel. Oh, period. I said it like I was gonna say something else. Um, because here's the thing, I, it, it's it's hard, okay? Like, especially now we're in quarantine, I think a lot of people are desiring to create content more and more and more. Um, more and more people are creating content. And so at the same time, we're having more and more reasons not to do it or, um, I hear about people saying, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, I'm gonna start a podcast, and then they never do, or they're not, or they're still in like the third year of planning. Um, and so I'm saying that with a smile on my face because I get it. I am a content creator. I know the struggles that, that you face. And I wanna say like also, cut the bullshit and just fucking do it. <laughs> like now is the time, like our, the world needs more light and joy and love out there. And your frequency, your vibration, your voice needs to be heard. I don't care if you think there's someone else that's already doing it. Like you have your own unique signature and your own brand of magic and it needs to be out there. And you not releasing your work, you're being selfish. You're being selfish and stingy and greedy with your heart and your love. So that is my call to action. Um, and that's why I really wanted to do this episode because yes, Jeremy, the world needs more of you. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, oh yeah, Jeremy wants to know if you're an Aries. Yes, uh, Reese is an Aries. He's yeah, Aries. April 3rd, what up, what up? I see you April 4th. April 4th, I know. <laughs> My little Yo, brother's birthday is before. I am close with so many Aries. Like, 
I, and it's funny because Cancer usually doesn't go well with Aries, but I have enough fire in my chart that like Aries is my people too. So um, you on the um, cusp technically. <laughs> but am I? I mean, I am. I am on the cusp. I'm a like, Cancer Leo cusp. So, but I also have a lot of Leo in my chart. So I got fire. Actually, my dominant element is fire and then water. So there's Great. that. See? See. Um, okay, so a podcast, starting a podcast. Let's first talk about like why it's hard. And so actually, and Reese, you just you just released your podcast. I this did, week. I did. <laughs> but as someone who finally really like tell us how long had you been wanting to do it? What struggles did you face and what finally pushed you out there? Like what how long have you been wanting to do a podcast? Well, um, the the idea of a podcast specifically is still relatively new, okay. and that's you know, part of it too. But um, but you know, I, I don't know. I probably started thinking about a podcast like two, three weeks ago. Okay. Um, but as far as what the podcast is for, that idea has been around for almost ten years now. And I knew that I wanted to build a platform to introduce people to this idea. Um, and, you know, I, I thought it was one one light, which, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I thought it was music. But, you know, a, again, music is uh, it, it's still in the picture. Don't get me wrong. But I wanted to have a, a, a broader reach. And so I thought about YouTube. Um, it's still on in, in the picture. It's still on the table. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of kicking myself in the gear like, hey, just do it. <laughs> but uh, but I, I think I think a podcast is is, is really going to be more of, of my lane. So. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just excited that I did it at the end of the day. Yeah. And what struggles did you face like leading up to it? So, I mean, you actually so it's only been a few weeks. See, y'all, he's only been thinking about it for two or three weeks and he launched. So be like Reese. <laughs> Yeah. But what struggles did you face before, like actually putting it out there? Like, or did you face any struggles? Yes, to an extent. So my type of personality, like I have a perfectionist personality. So it's like, if if it's if it's not perfect or like, well, I'm I'm gonna just I'm gonna just keep it honest with y'all. I can't tell you how many times. I stopped and restarted or deleted everything that I worked on, whether it was 10, 15, 20 minutes worth of content, just said, you know what? I don't like it. Let me delete it. Start over. That's that's kind of an area where For this I, podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. So that, that's an area where I want to get better as far as like just. You know, keeping what I have and building on it. Um, but you know the 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 way. So when did you finally like let go of that? Because I I'm a perfectionist too, and I feel like that is one of the main things that stops people from actually yeah. launching or or continuing. So well, what what had you finally like let go of that? Perfectionism? So uh, just so everybody knows, I officially launched it on my brother's birthday, and that's why I've been saying new beginnings because I knew that at the end of the day my goal was to release it on that specific day. And as the hours mm -hmm. passed by, um, it was just like, you know what? Like- You gotta I, get something out there. I gotta do something. And so I just kind of pushed myself to the line to where yeah. it was just, you know what? I don't I don't care about it being perfect. I just want to focus on perfection moving forward. Yeah. So at, at that point, I just, I just really, you know, you usually usually I'm the type of person I hype myself up before I do something, but it, it, I just had a moment of absolute peace where I was like, "Hey, look to myself. This is the last time I'm gonna press record. Whether I'm happy with it or not, this is what the world is gonna get." And that and that's just what it was, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What's up, Cat? Cat is in the building. Hey. Again, as you're popping on, um, drop a hello, halo, drop a halo, halo, drop a hello in the comments. How much wine did I have? Not a lot. Um, and if you're watching the replay, give us a hashtag replay. We are talking about how to start a podcast or YouTube channel. And we're talking about the, the, the block that is perfection and how it, so what I'm hearing as the antidote or the way that you got through it was like, you've got to give yourself a deadline. You've got to set a date. 
and stick to it because you just kept deleting and deleting and deleting and recording and recording and you were like oh crap like august 24th is approaching soon like i gotta call it and you called it and you were just like release or perish kind of thing um and i think that's what you've got to do it's it's like release or perish because you can easily stay stuck in the planning mode and the thinking mode and the perfectionism mode and the fear of failure mode and the fear of success mode you know because it's like oh i'm scared no one's gonna listen or no one's gonna watch Okay. But then I'm also scared that people are going to listen and people are going to watch. And you just you just got to put it out there. And one thing one of my mentors said that I always remember in moments like this is like, if you're not embarrassed by the work that you put out, you waited too long. Yeah. And it's like, like I said earlier, if you're just joining, the world needs your voice out there. The world doesn't need you to be perfect. The world needs you to be real. <sighs> But but again, it's 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 progress, not perfection. Yes. Progress, not perfection. And and honestly, like uh some something that you said earlier, that's what was really ringing true for me. And it's the fact that the world needs to know your story, the world needs your energy because at the end of the day. There's no, there's not a single person ever in history, ever to come or ever right now who has the same thumbprint as you, which means that you are here for a purpose. Everything that you've been through, your story is meant for somebody who might be going through something. And if you don't share your story, you're doing the world a disservice, you know? Yeah. And I love that phrase, progress, not perfection. That's another mantra that I keep. And um, yeah, it's and like launch imperfectly and you'll make it better along the way. And like, don't compare yourself to people who've been doing it for years because you're always that that'll keep you in that perfectionism and that'll keep you in that mode. And so so for me, y'all, I have a podcast anyway, (laughs) just so it's here, AmeliaFortis.com slash podcast. Uh, It's called Courageous Self-Love and it's available on all platforms. There's 22 episodes of season one out and available for you to devour. They are classic, timeless episodes. Um, I'm very, very proud of them. And the, the big thing that got me started was, so I wanted to do one because that, I just, I just wanted to, and um, and I, I was sort of stuck in the perfection a little bit for a while, or I think I was also in denial that I wanted to do one, um, but then more and more people around me were, were doing them, and I just was like, all right, I need to just get it out there, because I'm on the phone with my friends, I'm on I'm on sessions with my clients, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my content, and I'm like, yo, this stuff is good like this needs to be immortalized on the interweb because it's just such good conversations and just such material um and you know i did get stuck for a while of like oh i should find the perfect music and like the perfect way to edit it and oh i need to get this you know perfect microphone i need the right technology yo i freaking some some of my episodes i recorded on voice memo okay uh, the ones that I have with guests, we recorded it on Zoom. And yes, I've gotten feedback at the imperfect sound quality. So I'm sorry that the sound quality is not studio quality. But the content is quality. And so, I mean, I was like, yeah, I recorded it on Zoom. Because I was like, you know what? If I keep waiting until I get the perfect microphone or the perfect software or the perfect music, like, I'm never going to do it. So I'm just going to start recording and I'm just going to start putting episodes out there. And just like you, I had a start date and and then I said, I'm going to put out episodes weekly. So I was like hustling for those weekly episodes. Actually, no, I, I, I batch recorded. So I would have a good amount. I would have like at least a month to two months worth of content. So I was like recording a month in advance and then Mm -hmm. I was just putting things out and putting things out. Um, it's a lot of work and it's, it's a lot of work, but like, you just got to put it out there. And then I know we talked a little bit about like, a, or a YouTube channel. So I also have a YouTube channel and I remember I started my YouTube channel in 2011 
and um, I don't have a lot of followers because I was <laughs> I took a break from my own channel and I was actually managing another channel that got deleted whatever we don't want to talk about that but that channel had thousands of subscribers and thousands of views and then it got deleted but whatever that's what happens when you build someone else's brand and not your own Ooh, talk about it <laughs> oh, that's real. Listen, look. Listen, this is okay. Like, this was one of my hard lessons. For me personally, and you watching, you might relate to this. I was, I would do poor blood, sweat, and tears to build other people's brands. And so the channel that I'm talking about, I put out videos every week. I poured my soul into those videos. But it wasn't for my brand. And it was funny because I was working with a YouTube mentor at the time. So another thing, hire a coach, hire a mentor. Don't be cheap. All the best people have coaches and mentors. Just freaking do it. Invest in yourself. Treat yourself. You're worth it. So I hired this YouTube mentor who helped me storyboard my content, write. I mean, I'm already a good content writer and script writer and already good on camera. And she made me better. You know, she was a, a professional host in the industry. She taught me. She, she helped me um, sharpen my hosting skills, my on camera skills. She gave me ideas for like the like how to do the call to action, the subscribe. And she helped me with my content and my my um, production calendar and all of that. She just like I met with her every week and we were like planning out my content. And every week she was like, why are you doing someone else's channel? She was like, you need your own brand. Like you, you <laughs> but I, let me tell you, I didn't believe in myself enough. I thought I needed another brand to like help me get there. Um, mm. And maybe on some level too, I was too scared to, to, to branch out on my own. And yo, so for months and, and y'all that create content already, you know, weekly YouTube content, you've got a storyboard. You've got to write. You've got to do hair and makeup. You've got to set up your camera, your lighting, your background. You've got to edit. You've got to post. You've got to tag. You've got to cap. write the caption, the description. You've got to write the right title. You've got to do a thumbnail. And you've got to post it. And then you have to market that video. You have to post it on LinkedIn and, you, and um, Facebook and Twitter and whatever. It's a lot of work. And I did all, all that work and they've deleted the channel. And I was honestly depressed for a really long time. I did not create content for a really long time because I felt so defeated like for at least two years. I did not create content. So this was like a few years before self love story. Oh, and yeah. even when I, yeah. you were like, I was depressed and sad. Okay. Oh, and good. every time I thought about creating content, I could feel that sadness in the pit of my stomach and in my chest. And I just was defeated and I felt like a victim and I felt like screw this. Um, but then I started Self Love Story. And even when I started Self Love Story, I didn't create content like that right away. Um, I mean, but now here I am. We've got Wind Down Wednesday every week, we've got my podcast. We've got courageous self love healing circles. I'm writing emails. Like, I'm creating content, baby. And you know why? Because it's my platform and I control it and I get to do the production awesome. calendar. And, awesome. and it's, yeah. So essentially, what am, what am I saying? What's the point of, I'm like channeling right at now. Like, what am day, I saying? At the end of the day, it's personal development. Focus on you, build you, because okay. nobody else is going to do it. At the end of the mm. day, nobody else is gonna do it, and yeah. and and focus on what you can control. Again, it go it goes back to the controllables. Don't focus on the uncontrollables. Focus on what you can do for you. Yeah, absolutely. So I actually want to segue into a piece of uh, teaching, a teaching moment, and Reese, we can chat about this. Um, and I decided to do it. it. It came through. And actually, those of you that are in my four-month self-love journey radiance, this is a sneak peek into one of the pieces of content that I'm creating for that program. So all of you watching, you get this for free right now, but this is a sneak peek into the type of content that I teach and that I do in my programs. Um, so hopefully you like it, but um, 
basically it's something that one of my mentors showed me and I didn't create this. Um, so I'll tell you the source. So the source right here, you see at the bottom, it's from the 12 week, the 12 week year by Brian P. Moran. I think that's how you say his name, but essentially it's like, can you see my mouse as I'm moving? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, this is the emotional cycle of change. So actually, let me stop sharing for a second. What I'm about to go through is the emotions that you will go through anytime you are experiencing change. And that change includes starting a podcast and starting a YouTube channel. Because starting something new that you've never done before is a change. <laughs> And we, we all go through these emotional cycles or this emotional cycle with any change that happens, starting a new job, starting a new relationship, starting a YouTube channel, starting a podcast, leaving a job, whatever. So it's important that, you, that you're aware of this because I'll show you where most people quit and why, you, and then when most people quit there, it's why you think you suck and why you think you're not good enough because it perpetuates that. So just follow along with me with this emotion. Do you remember this, Reese? Um, we were taught, we had the same mentor at one point. We were taught this. Do you remember? Yeah, you know, it's somewhere very deep in, in, in the history of, uh, you know, just All right. that, that was a whole time period. But anyway. I know, that was a lifetime ago, <laughs> huh? So, so here is the emotion. So follow along with me from left to right, okay? So here's stage one. So this is like, yay! I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. It's going to be so awesome. I have all these ideas. It's going to be about self-love or it's going to be about finances or it's going to be about makeup or it's going to be about lifestyle or, or um, fitness, like whatever. And you're just excited because you're, you're seeing all these other people do YouTube channels and podcasts and you're like, wow, that's so dope. I can do that too. It's going to be exciting. You don't really know much about it, but you know you're excited. And this is why it's uninformed optimism because you just have the idea, right? This is the light bulb, the idea, and you don't know much about it. But so you have this optimism of like, yo, this is about to be so you're like having meetings, you're having production meetings with your friends. You're like, okay, we're going to do this show. We're going to have a meet. It's going to be awesome. And you're like high-fiving each other. And you're like, yo, that's amazing. And you have group chats and it's, it's just, everything's great. Everything is awesome. Right. And this is where you're in like optimism. Then you get started and then you do some research and then you start some things and then you realize I don't have a microphone. Oh my God, I think I need a ring light. Oh my God, what ring light should I buy? Should I get 10 inches? Should I get 18 inches? Are the small ones okay? Should I just get the one that you can clip on your phone? Can I just use my phone? Oh my God, do I need to spend $500 on a vlogging camera? Wait a second, should I do Spotify or Zoom? Or should I do Anchor FM? Or should I do, um, what's, what's the other one, Libsyn? So is it, should I do YouTube or should I do Vimeo? Like, what am I, do I need a new computer? So now you're starting to get information mm -hmm. and you're learning more and then you're like, oh shit, this is not so great. <laughs> yeah. Because you're getting informed and you're starting to get into pessimism. So this is where you get stressed out because then you're, yeah, you're like, what kind of ring light? What brand? Oh my God, I don't know brand. I don't know anything about ring lights. I don't know anything about microphones. I don't know how to edit. Should I use Adobe Photoshop? Can I just use iMovie? Or what about that, that little Windows movie thing? Like, do I need to get a Mac? I don't, so this is, this is where we're starting to dip. And now we're like, this isn't such a good idea. And so we, but we still push through. You know, maybe we talk to someone else who has a podcast or a YouTube channel or maybe we go on YouTube to learn more. So we get some more information, but now things are really, really not looking so good. And now we are in the valley of despair. This is awful. I hate everything I record. I didn't know my voice sounded like that. Why do I do that weird thing? I hate how I look on camera. Oh my God, my acne is flaring up. I don't know how to do makeup. My hair looks stupid. My background looks dumb. Like. There's no way I can be like Liza Koshy or Jenna Marbles or whoever the hell. I don't know who's cool these days. 
and now you're like in the valley of despair. And here's the thing, you see this right here? This is where most people quit. Mm -hmm. They can't handle it. And because they're in the valley of despair and they think that maybe this wasn't such a good idea. And so most people quit and they're like, you know what, I'm just gonna try something else. And then they end up just repeating phases one to three right here and they never get here. And then the more and more they do one to three, the lower your self-esteem gets, the lower your confidence gets, the more you think maybe I'm not cut out for this, maybe I'm stupid, maybe I'm I'm just not good enough. There's absolutely no, and you, it just, you just seem farther and farther away from your dream and from your intention and from what you've set out to do and this moment right here this stage one uninformed optimism seems so far away and you forget why you started and you forget why you wanted to do it and so you quit and you quit and you feel like shit about yourself until you find something else new but then you start back over at stage one and let me stop. i'm gonna drop one more this is also with relationships because you notice most relationships don't last past three months. <laughs> mm. mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you going in tonight. I'm going in. I came, I, I came with my wine, I came ready. That's so right. you've got to push through the valley of despair. And here's the thing I'm going to say. It's the right people. So not like your shitty do nothing bitch friends, cause let's be honest, you got them. Maybe you're one of them. No judgment, but you know, I've been a shitty, well, I don't think I've ever been a do nothing person. I've always done stuff. <laughs> but you know, you can't be hanging around the people that are like, well, maybe you should just quit and maybe you just shouldn't do it. Like you don't want that energy around. So what you need to get through the valley of despair is you need accountability. You need mentorship and you need the right community. You need the right people around you who are going to understand the valley of despair, but also know, understand what it's like to get to this stages four and five. I I, I have something that I like to yeah, add to that. Um, you know, th those are those are all external circumstances, you know, the community. Yes. Um, the mentorship, you know, all of that, that's all external, but really yes. you gotta, you gotta dig deep in yourself and find the reason why. Yes. yes. You, you have to know why you're in this thing. First and foremost, everything else, you know, that that's just further support. But yes. if you don't have a big enough reason to drive through that valley of despair, you're never going to make it period. Yes. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you brought that up because that was going to be one of the points too of like how to start a podcast, how to start a channel. You've got to have a strong enough why. Because if your why is not strong enough, then anything will knock you down. You know, and like for me, my why has been pretty much the same why for a really long time. And I have a few of them. One is representation. Mm. We all know how much I care about social justice, social equity, and representation matters. And I know that it matters to have someone who looks like me be prominent in the spiritual and personal development community. And while there's more and more of us, there's, there's, there's definitely no one that's like, you know, whatever, Oprah status or Gabby Bernstein or whatever. It's, it's like Oprah... A bunch of white ladies and like Deepak Chopra and some white guys. What Filipino do you know that's prominent? Like, like the mainstream? Yeah. So, so that's a big part of my why is I cannot quit because I need to represent. I get to represent not only for myself, but for my, my peoples. That's, that's, that's one thing that is definitely big enough that keeps me going. I think about little girls in the Philippines who only get 15 minutes at their internet cafe after school before they have to go back home. And 
they get to find one of my self-love videos and see someone who looks like them talking about self-love and self-care and healthy sexuality and healthy body image. Like I think about that little girl. That's that's my why. And and then more personally, I think about my little girl, my child, my daughter, who is going to grow up with a mother who pushes through the valley of despair. Like that is my, I think about my nieces. I think about my nephews, that they're watching me. Children are learning how to love themselves by watching us. So I'm following my dreams for those people. And also for myself, for that little girl, my little girl that didn't have the support and the emotional um, love and care that I needed when I was younger. Like that's my why, you know, I, I that's big enough for me. So the days when I really feel like shit and like a sad potato in my bed, I'm like, gotta do it for the little girl in the Philippines and the little girl in my heart. And I mean, you can feel that, that's big. And so anytime I get a shitty comment or a hate a hater email or somebody says no to joining my group program, well, nobody said no, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, I just remember that, or I feel like crap, or I feel not good enough, or ugly, or too fat, or too whatever. Like that's my why. That's that's been my why for a long time, and that's what gets me through that valley of despair. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, thank you for bringing. You have you got to have the internal resources, and then the external resources, because then together you will push through. And the more you stick around people who are not like, like I see too many people figuring out how to do a podcast or a YouTube channel and listening to people that don't have no damn podcast and no damn YouTube channel. <laughs> or I see, I see a lot of people taking money advice from people who are freaking broke. And it's just like, why? Like they're not gonna, they don't know how to get through this. They're just gonna tell you to start over, you know? So you've gotta, you've gotta have all those. And then when you get through, and not only that, it's so much better because we will, you will go through the valley of despair, but it's so much better to not go through it alone, you know. And it's it's been so helpful for me so when I go through my valleys of despair to be around my fellow content creators, people who are either at my level or even ahead of me with more followers and more whatever, because they're like, "Yeah, girl, we know, but you got it. Keep going," because you, the do nothing bitches are gonna be like. Yeah, well, maybe it sucks. Just don't do it or whatever, whatever they say. But the people, your people that get it, that are in your community, they're going to be like, no, nah, you got this. Keep going. What's your why? They're going to remind you of your why. They're going to remind you of your why and they're going to remind you who the you are. So <laughs> once you get through the valley of despair, um, then you start to... Like again, when you have the right community, the right mentor, the right why, then you start to get more information and realizing, you know, you speak to people, people like me, people like Reese, people like whoever in your life. And they're like, yeah, I have had moments like that. And yeah, it does suck, but you know what? You keep going and what's your why? And then you start getting more information from what the other side looks like. But sooner you start to go back into optimism and it becomes informed optimism. So you basically flip flop from stage two to stage four. And then you let that ride and then you take it all the way to success and fulfillment. Absolutely. And then you start over again. So you push through the valley of despair to success. Thank you. That was my sermon. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's so it's so interesting because in, in a lot of ways, if, Let's if leave it up are, for a yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Um, and in in a lot of ways, if you are familiar, even if you're not familiar, um, this emotional cycle of change is very synonymous with the stages of grief as well. And you know, if 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 you, oh my gosh, if you know how to push through stages of grief, then stages of change is almost like a walk in the park because grief. Well, grief, grief and change, you know, they they can be synonymous, um, but yeah, they like just the the two cycles as a whole. Um, 
they're emotional roller coasters. And if you just know how to hold on past the low and get back to that high, oh goodness, you can get through anything. Well, I will tell you, so um, a lot of you know, I'm really passionate about grief, which is an interesting thing to be passionate about. I think I'm, it's not the grief that I'm passionate about, it's the recovery from grief that I'm passionate about. And I actually work a lot with my clients to move them through grief. Um, because grief is actually one of the definitions or one of my favorite definitions of grief is that grief is the natural and, in, and um, inevitable response to change. So it's a change in a pattern of behavior or a change in like a way of being or a way of life. And so yes, when someone passes away, that is a change. When you yes. start a job, that's a change. When you leave a job, that's a change. When you start a relationship, that's a change. Like. We all, like change is inevitable and grief is the inevitable response to change. And I think the reason why people feel weird about that sometimes when I say that is because they, when, when we hear the word grief, I think a lot of us think, <gasps> you know, like, and it doesn't always look like that. Grief is just the response to change mm -hmm. and grief looks differently. And actually I'm, I might, I might split some hairs here or I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to say it anyway. There are no stages of grief. Um, actually, the stages of grief is a misconception. So Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, who wrote The Stages of Grief, it was actually written about the stages of grief in response to finding out that you have a terminal illness. So, and, it, and not everyone goes through all those stages um, because Grief looks different on everybody. And I think when we talk about them in stages in that way, it kind of preempts people to feel like they have to go through a certain stage. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you don't have to agree with that, but that's just kind of one of the things that I read. And I just, it, it kind of blew my mind because I realized I don't always feel anger and I don't always feel denial and I don't always feel bargaining. Um, grief looks different. And so um, it's really, and I think just calling them stages kind of makes it feel like, it, it automatically makes us think that they're linear, but like grief, again, it's just like anything else, so, like something that, that needs to, to be processed. Um, and I think we know how to heal physical wounds and we know that healing physical wounds is a process, but emotional wounds is also a process. And okay. you can actually go through steps that help you heal um, but yeah, I mean, the, this is the cycle, this is the cycle too, that you would go through with grief because like you said, grief can be synonymous. I don't know if synonymous is the right word, but grief is right. the response to change. And so, um, yeah. So I just wanted to say, I don't know, that came through. So anyway, take it or leave it. <laughs> um, so yeah, did y'all, did y'all like this cycle of emotional change? By the way, this was a good preview for y'all who are in radiance. Dang, um, this a little day. And this was, this is only one module that's happening in radiance. So, you know, radiance is a four month self love journey. So just, just keep on the lookout for the content coming your way. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually y'all, I might even just use this video for radiance. <laughs> Um, so back to the topic at hand, Yeah. how to start a podcast or a YouTube channel, really no. understanding, do it, understand these cycles and, and get the support, you know, like there's something that I continue to keep learning just throughout my own personal development growth, um, is anytime I'm leveling up and this is, I think for everyone, but I'll speak for myself. Anytime I'm leveling up, whether it's starting something new, going to the next level in my business, starting with a new client, charging more money, whatever it is, um, all my shit's gonna come up. Because your ego, your subconscious mind wants you to stay the same. And so you've gotta be prepared. <laughs> you've gotta be prepared for your shit to come up, cause it will. You know what? Oh, people say I want to be fearless, and I'll be like, well, good luck with that, cause you're always gonna be afraid. There's always gonna be fear. It's now. It's 
what's your relationship to that fear? How do you alter your relationship to your fear? Which, <laughs> by the way, that's another module in Radiance, um, how to alter your relationship with fear. I'm so excited for that one. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. Because here's the thing, too many people are like, I wanna be fearless. And I'm like, no, no sis, you're gonna be afraid. The you question is, what's your relationship to that fear? And how do you befriend that fear? Ooh. What were you, know, what you <laughs> I, I say, I say, I say, it's not that you you got to be fearless. You have to embrace that fear and do it anyway. Yes. <laughs> I will always remember. I actually wrote a blog about this. So if you ameliafortes.com slash blog, I wrote a blog about this. So I, some of you know, I, I used to take gymnastics and. Um, you know, on the balance beam, we're learning how to do back handsprings on the back, like this freaking balance beam, right? And I remember my coach and he was like, it's not about, cause I was like, oh, I don't wanna be afraid. Like all the girls, we were like, I don't wanna be scared. I don't wanna be scared. And our coach was like, it's not about not being scared because you're gonna be scared. It's scary. You're you're jumping backwards onto a balance beam. Like like you're gonna be scared, but it's what you do with that fear. Now, are you gonna let that fear make you get down off the balance beam and quit gymnastics, or are you gonna use that fear to push you to nail the trick? Man, I I swear I was I was twelve when he told me that. And that got so burned into my brain that every time I'm afraid to do something, I hear his voice. And he was like, use the fear. Use the fear mm -hmm. as your ally to push you to get it done. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and um, I mean, you know, that was when I was 12. But since then, like within my self-love practice, I've developed and I've learned different techniques, all different techniques on how to alter your relationship with fear because fear is gonna be there. So expect to be afraid, expect to be scared, expect for your shit to come up, expect to feel lazy, expect to procrastinate, expect to be like, expect it all, but call yourself out on your crap and set yourself up to win, you know? And yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. So now like every time I'm leveling up, I know I gotta double up on my therapy sessions. <laughs> Because I know my stuff's going to come up. Yeah. I double up on my hypnotherapy, my healing, my psychic readings, my session, like whatever. Like I get the squad in place. Just like in any sport, you have your team, you have your squad in their positions ready to support you to, to take that shot and to, to make that goal. You've got your accountability. You've got your mentorship. You've got your modules that you can use you've got your healing sessions like you, you've got to have all that in place your friends you know it, it's we can't we can't do this alone um so yeah reese anything you want to say while i kind of read through these comments oh my gosh nah like for for real for real at the at the end of the day uh, again the only thing i can really say is um there's nobody like you in the world. So you have what somebody else needs. If you keep it to yourself, you're being selfish. One, two, just do it. Forget about the perfection, focus on progress. Progress, 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 not perfection. Because at the end of the day, that's authentic and people are attracted to what's real. People are attracted to what's authentic. And last but certainly not least, just shine your light. Shine your light. Do it. Shine and shine and shine. And shine. <laughs> that's that's it. That's it. Don't focus on the controllables. Focus on what you can do. Look in the mirror. What can you do today? What can you do to what's that next step you can focus on? Don't worry about those uncontrollables. Yeah. I'll, I'll say too, I'll even talk about Wind Down Wednesday, right? So y'all y'all are here today. You saw, you may have seen the intro. You know, we've got like this, we're on StreamYard. We've got this like fancy overlay going on. We've got banners. We've got, you know, like I can, I can, I can post people's comments and stuff, right? Like we got Cat Hey Cat. I don't know why I picked that one, but that's the one I picked. Um, 
<laughs> now, if you look back at Wind Down Wednesday, it was literally just me and Felix, like, chilling in front of, like, we were like, what's up? Like, I don't even, we were on Zoom. And so, but for me, if I would have waited until I got Wind Down Wednesday to this point with, like, the perfect overlay and the perfect intro video and all of that, like, I would have never started. I was just like, yo, let's just get on a Zoom. Let's just go live. Let's just do this. And if you go to my YouTube channel, which actually I think my assistant just changed it. So I think, yeah, you can search The Amelia Fortes on YouTube. My first video is there. So the way, I'll, I'll tell you, the way I started my YouTube channel, because again, I was in my head about it. Like, oh, I need the perfect bumper, the perfect banner, all this stuff. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just open up my computer and start recording. So I literally, like one of my, it's not my very first video, but one of my first videos was, cause my very first video was like me responding to someone else's video, but whatever. So my very first video, like for me, and it wasn't self love story at the time, it was something else, I don't know what it was. Um, Cherry V, oh my God, yeah, I was Cherry V. It's yep. literally just like, you'll see, it was just me talking. I just was like, hey, um, and I remember talking about the law of attraction, like, I don't know. And I was like talking about the law of attraction and it's like, I watched this video and I'm like, oh my gosh, like what was I talking about? I don't know. It has a few hundred views on it, like three, apparently 300 people watched it. So I don't know, but. <laughs> it's not bad. But I just, but I was like, I just need to start this channel. I just need to do it, you know? And a lot of the things, like people look at my stuff and they're like, girl, you're creating content like crazy. You're just, I was like, you know why? Cause I'm just doing it and I'm letting it be imperfect and I'm letting it suck. So, but also too, watch this again and rewind to Reese's like last words. Cause he gave you like step by step by step. And just remember the emotional cycle of change that happens. Um, one more thing, one yes. more thing, because you kind of, you kind of like, you know, breezed over it. But listen, just real quick, Amelia talked about having a personal assistant. Now, that's not to say, again, oh, you got to have all these things in place in order to get started. Amelia has put so much time, effort, energy into building her brand herself. She started from a place years ago to get to where she is now. But also, when you get to that point, outsource your, I don't like to say weaknesses, areas of improvement. Yeah. Outsource. I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot of y'all know, and shout out to Aika, my assistant. She also loves when we shout her out. Aika, I do not, like, I do not know how I ran my business without you. <laughs> Absolutely. But you are a queen. You are a, a master of design. Um, anything that looks good. Actually, she did the intro um, bumper to, to this show. Anything that looks good, guaranteed Ika probably did it, not me. Um, yeah, and also, yeah, don't feel like you need to have an assistant now. But but I will say hire before you're ready. Because I my first assistant I hired before I was ready. And when I was like, I don't have money to be paying for that. But when I hiring her said that I was telling the universe I'm ready for more. Mm. And the more you try to do stuff alone, it's just, it just, just, and also like pay people. These artists, like they, they deserve to be paid too. They deserve job opportunities. Um, and so <laughs> Kat says, Ika is a baddie. Yes, Ika. Mm. Um, and then Kat, you also said something earlier because like, yeah, and thank you Reese for pausing on that and not glossing over that. Um, okay. And, and I did I did work hard to get to this point, and I'm very proud of, of where, where we're at today and just how much more we can go now that Ika is on board. Um, I, I wouldn't really be, I wouldn't be able to deliver Radiance in the way that I'm about to deliver it because we start this week. Ew. Um, by the way, you can still join Radiance, so if you are interested. You. <laughs> by the way, you know, you can still join, um, but but yeah, I would not be able to deliver it in the way that I have if it wasn't for her. And Kat, you said something earlier too that I saw. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh wait, no. Yeah, I can't believe it. I made it this far without life coaches. So I want to say something about that. You know, like you don't need a life coach. You deserve one. You don't need an assistant. You deserve one, you know? And I think our culture, we're getting 
to a better place around like hiring coaches and mentors and and healers and whatnot. Um, but I, I don't think we're there yet. I think we still think we can do this stuff on our own. You know, and a lot of times people look at me and what I've built with Self Love Story and even what I've built with other brands that were also big that they must, they who will not be named at this moment. Um, and people sometimes tell me like, oh my gosh, Amelia, you're so lucky the way that you just, you just get stuff, which is true. I, I, I'm a really good manifester, um, but I work for that. I train that muscle. I train my self-love muscle. I train my manifesting muscle. I train my law of attraction muscles. I train my subconscious mind. I hire people to support me. Like I would not be where I am today if I didn't join programs like what I'm delivering in Radiance. You know, I'm delivering a program like Radiance because I've been in programs like Radiance. Well, not like, because it's my program, but you know what I mean? Like, I've been in programs and, and what that's done for me, the community, the, the personal development, the trans, like, we all have blind spots that we can't see. And it, it's almost arrogant to think that you can create greatness on your own. And it's not that you need, like, you can absolutely achieve great things on your own, but think about it. All the greats out there, like, even the greatest singers have singing coaches, have producers, have publicists. They don't do it. They don't run their brand on their own. You know, and like we all have people who help us. Someone needs to hold the camera at some point. Although at first it will just be you. I mean, I remember when I was like, I remember when I was like hanging up sheets in my bathroom and like trying to get the natural lighting to hit just right. Cause I didn't have a ring light. Um, and, and I actually, one of my videos, someone was like, wow, did you record it in a studio? I was like, girl, that's a bed sheet. And I'm sitting in front of my toilet. Like, what are you talking about? A studio. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the other brands that we were talking about, the YouTube channel that got deleted. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember they wanted to do more videos because I was pumping out so much content and they wanted to do more videos. And the CEO of that company, do you remember this? When they called me and they were like, so Amelia, like what, how do you do these videos? Like what do they, what, like, what do you use? You know, cause um, we're trying to get our team to produce more and they're saying they can't do it. They're saying they need thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, like, nah. And I was like, um, well, one time I was in a hotel room that had really shitty lighting. So I had yeah. to borrow lamps from other hotel rooms and like, like, put it just right and stand oh. in the just right spot. Or I had oh, to make sure God. I was recording while we had natural, like, do you remember the, when I was making these videos? Those beginning days are so rough, but you gotta think like getting getting to this point, you can, you can talk about it and laugh now because it's like, yo, you, at the end of the day, you, you just, you have to make it. If your why is strong enough, you're going to find a way, period. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And Kat, this is a great one. Yeah, sure, we could do it alone, but it will take way longer and be lonelier. Facts, lonelier. Mm -hmm. So why not invest in ourselves, build community, and pay other people for their talent and worth as we elevate? Yes, yes queen. Yes, and then Jeremy, have people to keep have people accountable and help them. And help them. Yes. People will talk but aren't willing to do the work. Facts. Oh, I love you too, Jeremy. I don't listen to them. I love my coach Maya people a lot. People not in the arena do not know a thing. Absolutely. I love that. Well, it's not Brene Brown's quote. It's Teddy Roosevelt's quote, but she talks about it where it's like, if you're not even in the arena, I don't need your opinion. Um, but uh, I think this was this cat, your comment here. It was like the perfect way to end it. Um, but, oh, actually, here we go. Cats just bring in the heat tonight. If your why is strong enough, you will find a way. Period. It's the why. The why is 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 the the number one most important thing. You'll find a way to like fix the lighting and just put something out there. Um, and oh, and here's one more thing I'll leave y'all with that um, Pastor Troy Roberts from One LA, one of my favorite churches. He says, you know, fuck up now before you have the millions of followers. I mean, I'm sure he didn't say those words. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> So it's like it's like you know we're we're thirsty for all these followers, but it's like I'm glad I don't have millions because some of the shit I do, I'm like, 
<laughs> Just because you have followers does not mean you're a leader. Oh, Woo! Okay. keep going. Okay, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> so, um, anyway, that was tonight's episode. Thank you so much. This was how to start a podcast or a YouTube channel. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, drop some hearts, drop some likes. Um, catch us every Wednesday, Wind Down Wednesday, every Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, oh, yeah, Reese, how can we listen to your podcast? Yo. Um, I don't know. What's, let me, anchor, I need to... anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M forward slash, I believe it's Jen Hype or Jen Hype Edutainment, one of the two. Just go on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever. Type in Jen Hype Edutainment. That's G-E-N. I got, I got you, I got you. I got you, I got you. That's it. That's it. That's the one. And my podcast is Courageous Self Love, and I'm on YouTube, being Leah Cortez. And we'll be back next week. I'm hoping, I don't want to make any promises, but I'm talking to, I'm hoping we can talk about Twin Flames next week because that's, that's going to be cute. Um, but I'm not promising it because I need to check with, with the person's schedule. Hopefully, they can make it next week. If not, I'll find something else cute to talk about. But we'll let you know. You know, just just keep it locked. You'll see. Oh, also, um, I'm putting. Well, actually, Ika's putting um, wind down Wednesday episodes on YouTube. So I know it's kind of hard to find on Facebook because, like, you have to go to videos and you have to scroll, and it's like, a whole, like, it's it's not fun to find videos. But now they are starting to be put up on my YouTube channel. And there is a Wind Down Wednesday playlist. So if you, it's been pretty nostalgic because as she's uploading them, I'm like kind of rewatching them again. And it's just so cute, especially because it was like when we first started, we were just like getting into quarantine and I was still in South America and we were just chilling. Like, yo, Felix and I, we would get like drunk on Wind Down Wednesday. We would be like, what's up, everybody? <laughs> so, uh, but it's, it's still really good content. We talk about dating, we talk about mental health. We talk about grief. Um, there's a really good episode on grief, if, if that spoke to you. I've had Reese on the show a couple of times. We talk about how to attract love. We talk about trust, commit. We talk about money. So lots of different self-love topics. Um, and there's probably like nine or 13 or so episodes already up on YouTube. Um, so yeah, you can also find older episodes there. Shout out to Ika, you the real MVP, for real. And uh, she's working right now. I, I need to check in with her after this episode, see how she's doing. But um, thank you so much, Reese, for being here always. Um, and yeah, thank you all for watching. And see you next week on Mind Down Wednesday. And cheers. Bye, everybody.